a special on the piano, and then Pastor will come. Song 334, The Light of the World is Jesus. Thank you for that good singing, Mindy and Owen on the piano today. Thank you. 
just in case you didn't recognize that song, it's Abide With Me. Let me read the words to it because it speaks of God's goodness and his love for us as he uh, abides with us. Abide with me, fast falls the evening tide. The darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be? Through cloud and sunshine, O, oh, abide with me. Hold thou thy word before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. Thank you, Owen and Mindy and uh, Amy for playing the organ. Uh, she left, but thank her for me, okay? We are going to go to Isaiah. We want to go to Isaiah chapter 8, first of all, but we'll look at Isaiah 9 also. All the songs we sang today, I don't know if you noticed it, but they, um, they were about light and darkness. And even the uh, Abide With Me, it talked about darkness and uh, uh, God's light. We want to look and see what God tells us in Isaiah. He's telling us the darkness is past. Let me read um, Isaiah 9, 1 through 6. Then I'm going to go to Isaiah 8. Well, actually, we'll go to Ephesians first. He says in verse number 1 of chapter 9, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as one was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire." For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for your love toward us. We thank you that we can come to you and worship in this uh, small place that we know that we have this freedom in this country, we thank you. We praise you for what you've given to us. Lord, even though we live in a country that, where we have these freedoms, we know that freedom in Christ is much more important, greater gift that you have given to us to know that sin does not have to have authority over us. But through Christ, we have liberty. Lord, I pray for your guidance and your direction today as we look to your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go over to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And as we look at, we're, we're going to look at the darkness is past. But what uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, in verse number 12, we see and understand that the darkness that God is talking about is not a physical darkness in that uh, we need lights turned on uh, physically. Verse number, uh, chapter 4 and verse number 12 says, For the perfecting of, I'm sorry, 
I said Ephesians 6. I turned to 4. Verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're not going to deal with the principalities and powers today and describing them. But let me just say, this is what he's saying, is that principalities and powers are the rulers, are the spiritual rulers in, of the darkness, of the spiritual darkness. And he's talking about the demons, Satan and his um, angels, his messengers, who influence people uh, that uh, were all sinners and they're trying to pull us down. So he says, that's what we fight against. It's not against people. It's not against flesh and blood. We fight against spiritual wickedness. And so what we see in back in Isaiah, he talks about this spiritual darkness. The man's natural state without Jesus Christ we are in darkness. Just like God, uh, the Bible tells us, God um, called the darkness. So let's look at it. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. When we, uh, we talk about and we read what God did in the beginning, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. What happened? It says that God said, let there be light. And immediately we think about the beginning and we think God created the light. But in 2 Corinthians, it tells us what God uh, really did. I mean, he did create. But look at verse number six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It wasn't that he created light. Light was already there. He just called it out of the darkness. See, the light, and when you look at the, um, the creation account, you'll find, when we look around today, and, and uh, if there's no clouds, we know that the sun is out and it's shining up on the earth. And so the sun brings the light. And because especially when the earth turns and the sun goes down, everything gets dark. Light is not dependent upon the sun. And that's why when we look at, at heaven, the Bible tells us that there's not going to be any need of the sun because the lamb will be the light thereof. Mm -hmm. So when God called the light out of darkness, it was showing us that the darkness, the sun wasn't created yet. The darkness was overcome by the light. And we'll see that a little bit in, in, in John chapter 1. But God is telling us darkness is the picture of evil. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, and this is the, what, what we're going to read here, is what leads into chapter 9. Verse number 19 of chapter 8. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep, and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God? For the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry... They shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. He tells them here in, in uh, verse number 19, why in the world would people... Instead of turning to God, they're turning to wizards that mutter and peep and the uh, people who have familiar spirits who the familiar spirits are demons, by the way, just so you know it, not ghosts of dead people. When a person dies, their spirit just leaves the body, either goes to hell or goes to be with Christ. There's no 
ghosts of people, dead people walking around the earth. When you talk about a haunted house, if there is some weird things going on in a haunted house, it's haunted or live in, lived in, quote unquote, lived in by demons, not people who have died. So he's saying what 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 these people are doing, they go to these people who have these familiar spirits or demon possessed people, and they go to find out things from dead people. He says in verse, they should go to their God in verse 19. And he says, why would a live person, for the living to the dead, why would a living person go try to find out answers from somebody who has died? It makes no sense. Those people can't see, they can't hear, they're dead, they're done. It's over for them on this earth. He says they are in this darkness. There is no light in them. Even the people who go to them, the people who go to these, these, uh, I'll say seances and go to the, I'm not, this isn't what I'm going to deal with tonight, today. It's just what he's saying here. They go to these mediums to find out answers from a dead person like Saul did when he went to find out answers from Samuel. That's probably the only time uh, in the history of the earth when God created that a real dead person has ever talked to a, a live person. Samuel, God allowed, I believe, Samuel to come back to talk with Saul. Scared the woman, the witch of Endor. She didn't know what was going on because it never happened to her before. But uh, Saul went to a person to talk to a dead person. It is, and, and they, that kind of person, it says here, there is no light in them. All, of the, uh, all that they do is in darkness because sin is in control. The darkness, the spiritual wickedness, the evil of the world is in control in their lives. And God has to bring light, and God has brought light. We'll look at our memory verse later on in the, in the message today. But the condemnation is that men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. They stay that way unless they understand the truth of what God has done for them. Now, if we go on here in verse number um, 21, and look at the people who are hungry, it says, uh, they shall pass through it, hardly be stead and hungry. It shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves. And who do they blame? They curse their king. But it also says, and they curse their God. Who gave them their king? God. And so if they're cursing the king, they're also cursing God who gave the king. They're blaming God for their troubles. God doesn't cause trouble. Man, Satan, causes trouble. God has the remedy. Most of the problems in, in this world are due to the fact... Now, the problems in people's lives are due to the fact that they turn, the people turn to things that don't matter. Things of this world... Uh, material things, physical things, things that they think will help their difficult lives. They don't turn to the Lord. They don't turn to the truth that God has made a way to escape the difficulty. And he says here in verse number 22, They shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Where do they go for help? The people who don't know Jesus Christ, who have never put their faith in Christ, and they're, they're following the world, they're following the things of this world, materialism and all of these things, they're driven to darkness because it just stays there. They can't come out of it. They don't know how to get out of it. But God has made the way. And we'll see that in a, in a little bit. Let's hang on to the, uh, Isaiah 9 and go over to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 gives us, it gives us the account of Jesus settling in a city called Caesarea. And look at um, chapter 4, let's start at verse number 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, now Nazareth is in Galilee, that's where he grew up. 
He came and dwelt in Capernaum. I said Caesarea. Capernaum is the city. Uh, Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zabulon and Nephilim. Now, here's a place where the, the translators translated the two cities in a different way than it is in the in the Old Testament. Naphtalim is or Nephtalim is Naphtali and Zabulon is um, Zebulun. And that's what we read. And we'll read it again. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias or Isaiah the prophet, saying, "The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephtalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Nays Gentiles." The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Now, we just read that. Let's go back to Isaiah 9. And when he says this in verse number 1, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as what was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Now, Normally, when we read these verses, verses 1 through 6, we, we don't look at the context. But he has just given us the problems of the people. The problems were that they were still in that materialistic um, view of life. They wanted what they wanted, and they were not coming out of that to go to Jesus Christ, to go to God. And so they were in spiritual darkness. All of these things are going on. They're going to false doctrine. They're going to false uh, beliefs, talk, trying to talk to dead people. And finally, he says, nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. It's the dimness of the darkness is not going to be like it was before when they were overrun by different countries, different peoples. But he makes the way that they can get out of that darkness. The darkness is past. When we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are coming out of this spiritual darkness, this life of sin, sin that has overcome us, sin that controls our way of thinking, controls our actions. We are come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we are free from that. So he says the dimness, the darkness that was there is not going to be the same as it was before because he's going to bring the light. Verse number two, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, that doesn't mean they're dead means that, that death is, is basically just hanging over them because there's no light in them. Darkness and death go together. And so they're in this shadow of death. They are being oppressed, and they don't know it. They are being held in this darkness, and they don't know it. In the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. What light? Remember when Jesus was on the... Uh, being nailed to the cross. And he said these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Sometimes we might um, narrow that down to the people who are nailing him to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> He's talking about everybody. Father, forgive people of their sins, because they don't know what it's doing to them. They don't have an understanding of what sin is uh, is going to do to them if they never get out of it, if they never put their faith in Jesus Christ. These people are in need of the gospel. They don't know that the sin that they're living in, the darkness that they're in, that they are offending the Creator God. They don't realize it. And here, this is that's why that's why the picture of darkness is so strong. If I, if I, we come into a, well, yeah, I don't know, maybe some of you have been in caves. If you go down deep enough into a cave, uh, you can't, there is no light, just dark. And you can't see what you're, you can't see what you're doing. Remember, not remember, this, this, the account of um, God bringing darkness over the land of Egypt. He says the, the darkness was darkness uh, that may be felt. It's just like, it's, it's just 
and closing you in and you can't move. Why would you want to move if you can't see where you're going? And the spiritual darkness holds people like that. But coming to faith in Christ, the darkness is past. The darkness is over. Look at verse number four. He says in, back in Isaiah 9, For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. In a, in a, in a picture here is what they have been in control or being controlled by other nations. And when God comes and brings them out of being controlled by somebody else, they are brought into a free state, a freedom, liberty. And there's joy in their lives. And he talks about the joy in verse number three. In verse number four, he says he took us this, the rod of his oppressor. They're no longer controlling. It's a picture of sin. It's a picture of what sin does to people. And it's the darkness that's holding on to them. The darkness, spiritual darkness, still threatens people of this world. Not just, this is talking about the, the Jews and, and uh, Israel, but it's also a picture of all people being controlled by darkness. Go over to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And this actually goes along with what Jesus said. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Proverbs chapter 4, look at verse number 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. I mean, these are evil people that uh, don't have Christ, don't have God, don't want anything to do with God. He goes on, but the path of the just, that's righteous, is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. The way of the wicked, they don't understand what they're doing. They don't, under, don't understand the way they're going. When a person in this life just lives in darkness, in this spiritual darkness, and continues on in their life, they are heading in that broad way that Jesus talked about. The broad way that many go through. But it's the wrong way. It's leading to death. And if people don't get out of that way and get off that broad path and onto the narrow path, it says here that they don't know what they're doing. They don't understand the trouble that they're in. They know not at what they stumble, just like a blind person, just like a person who is walking in darkness. John gives us a good picture of even Christians who... don't get to know what God wants as well as they should. Look over to the book of John. John chapter, I'm sorry, 1 John. 1 John chapter 2. Some people call John the uh, gospel of love or the, 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 the um, teachings that he had because he's, he uh, speaks a lot of love in the book of John, but also in the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, look at verse number 9. He says, He that saith that he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. We can say we love our brother. We can say that we love other Christians. But if we're not really loving them, he says, we don't understand, just like the people who are walking in darkness. We don't understand the, what love really is. He that hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness, 
and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. And we understand, we know that he's not talking about these eyes that we see light with, that we see things with. He's talking about our spiritual light and eyes of understanding. We don't understand the truth that God is love. And when we treat one another and we turn away and, and uh, act as if we hate others, there's no love in us. And we're walking in darkness. We don't have to be an unsaved person to live like an unsaved person. We can be a Christian and not understand truth and walk in a way that looks to others as if we are unsaved. Go over to, well, let me just quote it. Psalm 119, 105. The way we can get out of a misunderstanding, the way we can learn how to walk in light instead of in darkness is through God's word. He says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. His word, what God says, that's what we are to follow. Back in 1 John chapter 2, I didn't read it. I want to read one verse, and this fits what we're looking at as we understand the truth about our relationship with God as we come to faith in Jesus Christ. We are coming out of darkness into what, what the Bible says is His marvelous light. First John chapter 2 and verse number 8 says this, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in Him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. When we can come to faith in Christ, the darkness and the way of darkness, the lifestyle, the things that we used to do while we were in darkness, when we were unsaved and we didn't have the light, those things are to be put away. That means to divorce ourselves from them, throw them away. They are not the way a Christian should walk. And so we learn to walk in the light, not according to the flesh, not according to the lust of the old man, the old nature. We are to be, the, the darkness is over. That's the way we used to be. Put that away. The darkness is past. And now the true light shineth. We're going to be going, looking at church history on Wednesday nights. And one of the things we'll look at is what we call the Protestant Reformation. And there were people who um, finally understood that they've been following a, a religion, mainly the Roman Catholic religion, for so many hundreds of years. And finally, some people got to, got to looking at the Scripture and getting to an understanding of what God said. And they came to the truth of understanding that faith in Christ is the way of salvation, not all the things that the church told them they were supposed to do. So they came to the spiritual understanding and they, and they used a, a phrase to point out what the truth was. And it's Latin. Let me read what Latin says. It's just three words. And, and then I'll interpret them. I don't like to speak in tongues, so I will interpret them uh, according to what uh, somebody else has done. The words that they would speak, and, and you, you might find it if you ever do any research and stuff, you can find it written many different places. And people even have it on mottos on, uh, in their, their medallions for a college or something in the United States. But it's post tenebras lux. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Post is after, tenebras is darkness, and lux is light. After darkness, light. See, they came to a spiritual understanding of salvation. And they said, wow, we have come out of darkness into the light of Jesus Christ. Even though I was, I was in this religion so, for so many years, I finally came to the spiritual understanding. My eyes were open. My eyes of understanding were open. And now I can see. What does the amazing grace say? One of the, one of the phrases in there? 
I once was blind, but now I see. That's a whole picture of what the world needs to understand. I am in darkness. I need to know the truth. And God's truth is in his word to show us it's Jesus Christ. And that's where we come to verse number six in Isaiah chapter nine. All of these things are, are, are leading up to this. There's, there's the, the darkness that their people are in. And the reason why the, the, the people who walked in darkness in verse number two have seen a great light is because of verse number six. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. Who is this? Now, we read it in Christmas time, right? We know who it is. It's Jesus Christ. It's the light of the world that has come to take away the darkness. Because the light overcomes the darkness. Go over to John chapter 1. John, like I said, the, the, uh, the uh, disciple or apostle of love. In John chapter 1. Let's just start at verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And you can say the darkness didn't understand it. That's right. The darkness could not overcome it. The darkness had to move out of the way. Exactly like what God did in the beginning when he said, let there be light, the darkness moved out of the way. Jesus Christ is the way of truth. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And he gives us the responsibility to take over for him in this world, not to save people, but to reach them with the gospel. He said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. If you'll shine your light... People will see it. And that's why we, the, since the darkness is past, we don't continue walking in darkness. We begin walking in light so the people will see the city on the hill. We are his people to show him to the world. He is the light of the world. He was the true light. Verse number nine, that meaning Christ was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God makes sure that all people hear the truth. He makes sure all people will see Jesus Christ. Oh, they might not come to him in salvation, but they'll know the truth. They may not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, but God will make sure they hear and they will know that darkness is not where they should be. Let's go over to John chapter 3. John, you know, Jesus talked to Nicodemus and spoke a lot to him about salvation. Of course, we know John 3.16. That's a very familiar verse. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But notice what he says in verse number 18. He that believeth on him... John 3, 18, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, we recognize that verse too. They're condemned because they do not trust Christ. But it's, they're already in that condemnation. They, they don't need to do anything to be condemned. They're already condemned. And so we come to verse number 19. And he says, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. If you want to do something secretly, you don't shine light all over you. You get into the darkness so people can't see you. Do it at night. And that's why, that's why nighttime is 
when people lock their doors mostly people go out and, i mean it's worse today today you, you can you, you know that they're going through breaking windows and in, in, in uh, stores and stealing things and they don't get in trouble i understand that historically though the night was the time when people would do th their bad things because they're hidden and so jesus god tells us here and jesus is saying this he says this is the condemnation condemnation that light is coming to the world Jesus Christ has come into the world and instead of turning to him people are continuing in their darkness continuing to be condemned by God because they don't want to give up their evil and that's why verse 18 just naturally flows into verse number 19 they're already condemned because they don't believe in Christ. They're already condemned because they don't come to the light. They're already condemned because they're in darkness. All of us were in darkness. It's possible some of us are still in darkness. God wants us to know Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and what else? The light. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Jesus Christ, the light. The darkness is past, and now the true light shineth. Jesus Christ is what the world needs, because he is the light of the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your guidance into understanding the truths of Scripture. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us. If we are born again, we know you as our Savior because we've trusted Christ. Lord, I pray that you would help us to not walk according to the world, not walk in darkness the way we used to. Pray that you would help us to walk in the light. And as we walk in the light, people see our deeds Lord, that they should not be evil. Help us to recognize and live because the darkness is past. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.